Hello and welcome. This is a video guide on how to optimize GTA 5. I'd like to let you know that this guide will most definitely be very helpful for high-end systems, but it will boost mid-range and low-end gaming systems with much more effectiveness. The guide will show you how to boost the FPS in GTA. It will also improve the game quality and your system's performance. In turn, this will all help towards fixing any lag or FPS drops that you could be experiencing while playing GTA. GTA isn't the worst optimized game. It's not the it's not the best either, I guess. Yes, but nonetheless, we're going to go over a few steps that will show you the best settings to apply both in Windows as well as in game. There'll also be a few recommendations along the way as well. So anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. First and foremost, let's go over the very best Windows 10 PC settings step by step. Step one, clean out your shader cache. I cannot stress enough how important this is. This basically cleanses and resets your stored shaders. And every time there's a new update, more are added on. Shader compiling can cause crashes, stutters, freezes, and even overheating in some cases. It uses extra memory as well. So this should always be the very first thing that you do. There's a link in the description for a video that will show you two simple ways on how to easily clean and reset your shader cache. Step two, to ensure you get the most out of your PC whilst you game, I highly advise that you switch off every overlay and background application while you play. Things like Steam, Nvidia GeForce, Xbox Game Bar, Discord, even River Tuner, and any others that could affect the performance while you game. This is mostly for players with low-end gaming systems that need all the power they can get, basically. To turn the Steam overlay off, just head into the Steam setting menu, click in-game, and untick the box that says enable the Steam overlay while in-game. To turn off the Nvidia GeForce overlay, open up Nvidia GeForce Experience, click on the settings icon, go to general and switch off the in-game overlay for Xbox Game Bar. Using the window search bar, type game mode settings and then click the icon. Once the window is open, navigate to the left side and click Xbox Game Bar. And of course, set it off. Then you navigate back to the left and click on captures, where you then need to switch off background recording and recorded audio. For Discord, all you need to do is open settings and on the left select overlay. You'll then just need to disable the option that says enable in-game overlay. After you've done that, navigate to advanced and make sure hardware acceleration is set to off as this actually uses GPU power to run Discord. Step 3. In the window search bar, type in game mode and click the settings icon. Once the window pops up, ensure game mode is set to off. I know this sounds counterintuitive, but game mode is actually known for being more problematic than helpful. Currently, Microsoft are still working on a fix. I will put a link in the description below that goes into detail about the game mode option in case you're wondering how it all works. But for now, just switch it off. Step number four, navigate back to the window search bar and type in graphics settings and then click the icon. Now in here, you should see an option for hardware accelerated GPU scheduling and this needs to be set to on. If it wasn't, you will need to restart your PC once you've turned it on. After you've done that, navigate down to graphics performance preference and you'll want to add GTA 5 to your games list. To do this, you basically need to find where it is installed and you need to add the launch application to the list. So firstly, click on browse, then you go to your Rockstar folder, which you'll find wherever you install the game. You then click GTA 5 and then you simply add the application named GTA 5. Once that's all done and GTA 5 is added to your game, games list, click on options, and then you set it to high performance. And then you finally simply click save and exit. And then you're done. Step five, go back to the window search bar once again, type in power plan and click edit power plan. At the very top, click power options and under preferred plans, ensure high performance is selected. Step six, if you have multiple screens, I would advise to only have one screen on when you play. If you press the Windows key and P together, you will bring up a menu that lets you select which screens to have on. Okay, so now we're gonna dive into the game and we're gonna change a couple of things. So first and foremost, you should run a benchmark test before you do anything else. Once that's done, go into advanced graphics and under this tab, you'll want to leave all values as the default values from the benchmark test. So let's now go into the actual graphics tab. For screen type, full screen is always best. 
Resolution should be your monitor's native resolution. Mine is 1080p, so it's set to 1920 by 1080. Aspect ratio can be set to auto, as it will apply your monitor's native aspect ratio, which for the most of us will be 16 by 9. Refresh rate should always be capped to your monitor's highest refresh rate available. Mine is 144Hz, so it is capped at 144 frames per second. This will ensure that you're not overloading your GPU when your monitor can't refresh any higher than 144 frames per second. FXAA can be left off as there isn't much visual or performance difference. For MSAA, I would recommend setting it to times two as that seems to give you a good balance between higher frame rates and visual quality. If you're on Nvidia, then TXAA will automatically switch on if your MSAA is on as well as it complements the anti-aliasing visual quality. Now for VSync, you should set it off if you have a G-Sync or FreeSync monitor. Now, if you don't have that function within your monitor, then having V-Sync on or off is really down to you. If you have it on, it will stop your screen from tearing, but it will cap your frame rate to 60, and it will give you input latency, which is quite low, but it could give you a disadvantage against your competition if you're playing in multiplayer modes. Setting it off will remove that input latency, but you might see some screen tearing. If you do set it off, off, then I recommend that you cap the frame rate to no higher than 60 frames per second because that will minimize tearing. For population density, population variety and distance scaling, you are welcome to turn these down if you wish, but it won't make a huge difference either way. For textures, if you're on a GPU with less than 4 gigabytes of memory, you should set it to normal. Cards with 6 gigabytes and above can all be set to very high. Shader quality does make a good difference in visuals. I advise keeping it at high or very high if you can, but for a low NPCs, I would say set it to normal. Next up is shadow quality, which can be set to normal as there is very little difference in visual quality and it will give you an extra three or four frames per second. For reflection quality, it's best you set that on ultra, but for lower NPCs, I would recommend normal. Reflection MSAA can be turned down to times two without any penalty to visual quality. Water quality can be set to normal or high. Particles quality also normal or high. Grass quality makes the biggest difference with the FPS. You'll gain around an extra 12 frames per second by setting it to normal. Post FX can be set to normal as this will mainly be for things like bloom and motion blur, which we don't really need. Anisotropic filtering can be set to times four. Ambient occlusion should be on normal or off. And then finally, tessellation can also be set to normal or off completely. Of course, these settings do really depend on your PC, so definitely play around and see what works best for your own system. I do really hope the guide helps in some way or another. If you do have any questions, please pop them in the comment section and I will do my best to come back to you as quickly as possible. I appreciate you watching. Thank you very much. Goodbye for now.